dramatic increase of their incidence after 1981 is generally believed to be due to infection of these groups with htlv 3 lab and to its transmission by sexual contact. However, other factors often associated with homosexual practice such as anal deposition of sperm and nitrites could produce the clinical and immunological abnormalities seen in these patients. According to Gallo et al., the epidemiology of this syndrome, that is, the increasing incidence and clustering of cases, particularly in New York and California, dash suggests the involvement of a transmissible agent. However, around the time of the first AIDS report, two important changes took place in homosexuals' lifestyle in these areas. Increase in promiscuity and exposure to drugs, especially nitrites. Although nitrites came into use in the United States in the late 1960s, their use became widespread around 1975. It is of great interest that the latency for appearance of Kansas in patients treated with immunosuppressive agents for organ transplantation appears to be the same as that between homosexual exposure to nitrites and appearance of AIDS. Of interest also is the fact that these drugs were first manufactured in California and then transported to New York, the two areas with the highest incidence of AIDS. These drugs are immunosuppressive, mitogenic, and carcinogenic. Nitrites are oxidizing agents, and by this property they play a significant role in many biological functions. For example, anaerobic bacteria use nitrites in place of oxygen as the terminal electron acceptor for growth and respiration. It has been shown in a number of studies, and should be emphasized that, unlike all sexually transmitted diseases, where both partners are equally susceptible to the disease, in homosexual males immunosuppression appears in the anal sperm recipients, but not in the exclusive sperm donors. The risk factors in AIDS development are the number of homosexual partners, and frequency of receptive anal intercourse. Furthermore, many of the AIDS cases diagnosed in women may have resulted from the practice of anal intercourse by heterosexual couples. More importantly, carefully designed animal experiments leave no doubt that sperm is a strong immunosuppressive agent. Sperm is one of the best known metodic agents, and like all other mitogens is an oxidizing agent, its electrophilicity being a prerequisite for fertilization. During spermatogenesis, two main processes take place in the teats. Morphogenesis of the maturing gamete whose chromatin becomes progressively condensed, and replacement of the somatic histones with protamins by the oxidation of the sulfhydryl groups, SH, to disulfide, SS. Although maturation starts in the teats, spermatozoa released from the seminiferous epithelium are not fully mature from a functional standpoint and must complete their maturation by the oxidation of the SH groups to SS during the passage through the epididymis. The amount of cystin residues present as SH in the spermatozoa from the caput, corpus, and cauda epididymis and vas deferens being 50, 15, 5, and 3% respectively. Of pivotal significance to the present discussion is the finding of Hurton back that mature sperm is much more effective in producing immunosuppression than immature sperm. Since the significant difference between sperm derived from the seminiferous tubules and mature ejaculated sperm is its degree of oxidation, it is highly probable that this property determines its immunosuppressive effects. This is reinforced by the finding that sperm from older animals whose tissues are known to be more oxidized, is more effective in inducing immunosuppression. For the same reason, the homosexual male sperm may be even more immunosuppressive than that of healthy heterosexuals. The fact that sperm does not seem to produce immunosuppression during vaginal sexual intercourse can be accounted for by a critical structural difference between the epithelium of the rectum and vagina. The vagina is lined by thick stratified squamous epithelium which makes ulceration and penetration of the semen into the vascular lamina unlikely. In contrast, the semen in the rectum is separated from blood vessels and lymphatics by a single layer of cells which is easily penetrated and ulcerated during anal intercourse. In addition to lymphoma and cancer, the homosexuals have two other malignancies, cancer of the tongue and rectum.
the increased incidence of these two cancers like carcinoma of the cervix in women may be related to periods of high local concentration of sperm. Gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis B, herpes and amoebiasis are much more common among homosexual males than among heterosexuals. They also have a number of bowel infections which cause persistent and recurrent diarrhea. Many of the agents used for the treatment of these conditions are oxidizing agents, mitogenic and immunosuppressive. Furthermore, viruses, like all other cells, require SH for division and growth which they obtain from the host, thus oxidizing its tissues because oxidation of the host's immune system leads to immunosuppression. The possibility that all viruses are immunosuppressive to a greater or lesser degree is very likely. Two viruses, cytomegalovirus and Epstein-Barr virus, although present among homosexual men, seem to be universal in AIDS patients as a result of reactivation of latent viruses. Both viruses produce clinical and immunological abnormalities similar to those seen in AIDS patients. Fever, rash, lymphadenopathy and enhanced susceptibility to other infections are common manifestations of infection with these viruses. These viruses induce immunosuppression in vitro and in vivo, including abnormalities in the T4 slash T8 ratio both in humans and animals. Both viruses have been isolated from many sites, including Kansas, from almost all AIDS patients. Unlike the above viruses, HTLV3 slash lab has never been isolated in fresh AIDS tissues nor is there any evidence that it produces in humans the clinical and immunological abnormalities attributed to it. Yet HTLV3 slash lab, and neither the above viruses nor any other factors is considered as the etiological factor of AIDS. HTLV3 slash lab infection. Gallo and his group state the cytopathic activity in vitro, the repeated isolation from patients with AIDS and people at risk, and results of the serapidemiological studies are all consistent with HTLV3 being the etiological agent of AIDS. It is proposed to examine the epidemiological and serapidemiological evidence as well as the isolation of the virus in some detail. Many researchers have predicted that AIDS, like other sexually transmitted diseases, will spread by any type of sexual intercourse and more and more cases will appear among heterosexuals. So far this has not happened. According to Harold Joffe, head of epidemiological studies of AIDS at CDC, as quoted in a science editorial, the epidemiological pattern of the disease has undergone remarkable little changes. Unlike many other viral diseases, AIDS cannot be spread even by prolonged close exposure to AIDS patients. According to the Acting Assistant Secretary for Health James O. Mason, this is a very difficult disease to catch. An antibody molecule like that of all other proteins is determined by the linear ordering of amino acids in the polypeptide chain and by its three-dimensional structure. The prevailing opinion is that the linear chain is determined by gene transcription. However, evidence exists that both DNA and gene structure and function are regulated by the state of condensation to condensation, contraction relaxation of the chromatin, which in turn depends on the cellular redox and its oscillation. The bonds which play an essential role in the three-dimensional configuration of the molecule are the SS bonds. According to Karish, the disulfide links of the antibody molecule play an essential role in the acquisition of immunological specificity, and by virtue of their covalent nature, provide for the stabilization of the particular structure underlying the specific activity of the molecule. Furthermore, the pattern of pairing of sulfidryl groups to form disulfide